Gordon, I'm great. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks Morning, so everybody. Thanks for coming. Yeah, thank you so much for coming. Uh, I uh, appreciate the introduction. Far too kind. I'll start with this. I've never been this close to it. It's massive. It's how old? 123 years. 123. Imagine you and I when we're 123. We're not going to look like this, I don't think. How, how, how much is it weigh? 35 pounds. And it was crafted by whom, where? Well, it was, uh, it was donated by Lord Stanley of Preston, who, yeah. for those of you that don't know, was the sixth governor general of Canada. And he came over from England. He was appointed by the queen to kind of overlook Canada. The neat thing about it, he had three kids that played hockey, two boys and a girl. And when your dad's the uh, governor general of Canada, you got kind of a bit of Paul in Canada. So they convinced good old dad to donate something to hockey. So he came back with this little bowl that was made in Sheffield, England in the 1850s. And basically, it was a fruit punch bowl. He came over, brought it over, and made it into a, a challenge cup for hockey, which at the time, Canada was known as the Dominion of uh, Canada. It was just, had just become a country. And the evolution and the tradition started growing there. We, uh, we got to thank Lord Stanley. We got to thank his kids, actually, more than anything to have the foresight to have a trophy. You know, what's interesting about pro sports and, and is that with trophies, we hear so much about, I want a ring, uh, Larry O'Brien trophy in the NBA, that's, that's a big deal. But as we know, Phil, th th there's only one cup. Now, there's a duplicate, is that right? Yeah, there is one. If you went to the Hockey Hall right. of Fame today, they would say the originals at the AOL right. built right. today, this is a duplicate. So whenever you see it outside the hall, it's the real thing. So that... Give us a sense of, you've been doing this for a long time, since 89. What do the players say, especially the guys that win their first cup, when they get to first experience this, the appreciation they have, that knowing that the history of this and the, that there is only one, and it's not like every year you're getting a new cup? You know what? I, I think it's, it's awesome when the team gets presented and on the ice, they skate around, hoisting it over their head, whether it's in the visiting building or their home building, it's, it's always amazing. But I think it really kicks in, and you'd have to ask the players this, but when they're in the dressing room afterwards and they're celebrating and they're drinking out of the top, and if you get a chance to look in the bottom of the bowl, there's names in there. They see players' names from 1907, and I think it's then that they realize that, holy crap, I'm, I'm going to be part of this team, this team that lives forever, a Stanley Cup champion. I think that is the first time... It actually sinks in. Then when the parade comes and there's thousands of fans there, then it really starts to grow. And when they bring it home for their day and all their first coaches and teachers and friends and family are there and they get the key to the city or what have you, I think that's when they really realize it. And then probably their most special time is when they see their name on it for the first time, which is usually late September, October. They know they are part of this union they are a member of a Stanley Cup club that their name is on it forever. As I was getting ready for this, I was thinking about, you know, immersing myself in all the different stories around the Cup. And I read some crazy ones, but you've been at this for so long. Give us maybe one or two of your favorites, if you don't mind, Phil, about certain players. Because everybody, every player on the, on the winning team gets to spend time with it alone or with you. So give us a, a couple of your favorites. Um, they do. And... I'm, I'm very lucky to be part of that. I mean, it, it, the Stanley Cup is why they're there, and I just kind of get to hang out with it, which is okay. Uh, but it is amazing over the last 27 years now of traveling with it and where it's gone. And hockey has obviously grown a lot more than just Canada and U.S. It's played in 75 countries around the world now. Everybody that picks up a stick or puts on a pair of skates wants to play in the best league in the world, the National Hockey League. They want to win the Stanley Cup. They want to bring it home. So in, in recent years, we've been, we've been to Slovenia. Uh, we've been to northern Finland. We've been to Siberia. I think we've been to 24 countries now with it. You were with Finland with Tuka Rask, I saw. Tuka Rask a few years ago. Last year with uh, three guys from the Blackhawks. Actually, one of them now is the uh, Ranger backup goalie. Yeah. Uh, and their days are amazing. Like it's, they put so much planning into it, and it's all a, it's, nothing is about them. It's all about their town, their friends, and that. And I, I think really what separates a hockey team from anything else is they're not 
it's not about them, it's about the team. And they always think, what would the team do or what would their teammates do? So they, they don't like the focus on them during their day. Although they have the cup the whole day, they take it to sick kids' hospitals, we take it to cemeteries for past ones, they have their parties, they have their downtime, they sit with their kids and have ice cream out of it and things like that, but it it's all has to do with somebody else. Very rarely do they have five minutes by themselves because they want to share it. They know their goal to get to where they are is because of everybody else. What's the tricky part with the people around them that may not have the same <laughs> respect or appreciation what? for how special this thing is? I, I think they all have the same respect. The appreciation might be different. And it, it's always funny because you, you'll take it to somewhere, wherever it might be, northern Minnesota for a guy, and all his buddies he grew up playing high school hockey with or junior are thrilled that the cup's coming. The thing is, they've started their party at 9 o'clock in the morning, and he's gone to sick kids' hospitals and does all this stuff, does a luncheon with the mayor and all that. By the time the big party rolls around at night, all his old roommates and teammates are, they should be already gone to bed, but they're not. They're, they're in full force. That's, that's the hockey culture, though. It's the it's hockey culture, I guess, if you want to call it that. So they're, they're up and they're ready to go. And Meanwhile, you're looking at this like it's a baby. It is, and the player is the same way, too. I mean, he, he's worked his life towards this moment. Nothing is going to damage his day, but his buddies, they have all other ideas. Come on, let's go off the roof and into the pool or what, whatever they are. And, you know, they've got every idea. And, you know, when at night, no matter what night it is, usually 9 o'clock, 9.30 on a night time, if you're out, some people get new personalities. A lot of, it, a lot of them do. And it's always special, and it's, you know, social media has changed the world we live in. It certainly changed the cup world as well. With that in mind, do you clean every day? Every day, yeah. So, so how does that, is it a very specific process? How do you, what do you, Windex? I mean, what do you, what do you, what do you use? <laughs> yes. Yeah, no credit to Windex here. Uh, you know what, it, it, it's, it's neat, Jordan, because it depends where we are. Yeah. I mean, this morning, we got it shined here. It looks great right now. Beauty. Uh, by the end of the day, we'll have have to shine at least one more time. Often it's in a hotel room. Sometimes it's in the back area of a place, depending on where we're at. I remember we were, uh, a few years ago, we were in uh, Newfoundland, far east in Canada, for the Boston Bruins. Michael Ryder had won the cup. And we had to shine it, and we weren't at a house. We did it, and it was in kind of like a horse farm area. So we had, a ho we had a hose, and we had a cloth, and we were kind of in the back of the horse ranch, if you will, shining it to get ready for the night. So it all depends on where we are, but we do shine it every day. We use a soft detergent, because basically all we're doing is taking the fingerprints off. I, I, I think about the Stanley Cup, and there's so much history with it, as we know. What's, is there a part of it that, when you're around the guys that win it, that you, you see them and the way they react to it, that makes you feel like it's... It's bigger than hockey, and it's it's so much more than that. You mentioned the communities and the families. Give us a sense of that because it is it's more, it's so much more than just a trophy. It is. It's got a personality, I guess. And when it comes into a small town, and you notice if you look at the NHR rosters of where the guys are from, there's not a lot of big city guys. They're small towns. The whole community is behind it. So when we show up, it's, it's front page on their little newspaper. for. It's a celebrity itself. It is. Yeah. It's a celebrity that can't talk. So I go along, and I have to do the speaking for it, I guess, in a sense. But you talk to the guys, and they've got everything planned out and everything. And wherever we're going, whether it's a luncheon for this and a, a park visit or an arena visit, this is where I first played hockey. It's, it's all pretty amazing, and the fans all follow them throughout the day. They have a parade everywhere they go. Whether they want a parade or not, they've got a parade. So it, it's, I think that's what makes yeah. it that much special, and I know you used the word appreciation yeah. before. That's when they certainly appreciate it. How do you travel with it? I would imagine that with heightened security, it is more challenging. Is that safe to say? How, how does that process work? It is. It's, I mean, obviously our world has changed since 9-11. It has really changed, especially in the airports. And we make sure we're at the airports earlier in that because there could be processes along the way going through security. We're clearing customers. Hey, TSA, I got... Yeah. I and got, the, I got it, the cup here. It, it is. And they have to check it and everything. So we have a traveling case, which is which over in the corner there, that we they check it all. 
and they check the cup. But it's always, I think, amazing because there's so many hockey fans out there, and the TSA guy will do his job, and then he'll go, can you show me the Dallas Stars? I'm from Dallas, or, or whatever it might be. So then it, it's now not his job anymore. He's become a fan, and he goes, all right, close it up. I said, well, don't you have to put your little TSA? Oh, yeah, I forgot about it. <laughs> like, so it's, but thankfully, there's a lot of hockey fans out in the airports or at rental car places or wherever we're at that help us along the way, and the, the journey keeps going. What is the security around the cup? I mean, I imagine people have tr thought about, you know, I, how can I get my hands on this thing? How can I bypass security to get it? I mean, is there a process that you go through every day to make sure it's safe? Well, I, I guess in a way, yeah, but I mean, Brad's back there. You look at the muscles on him. Yeah. He's kind of hanging out watching us, so we, we're making sure it's all okay. And look at me. But we, we do, we work with the local police force. We work with the NHL security, the team security, airline security, the hotels know ahead of time and everything. But I think more than anything, it's, it's the Stanley Cup. It's all you hockey fans are all part of our security team. And they want to see, they want to have the chance to see it, but they also want to make sure that it's okay and for when their team wins it. Have you noticed the emotions that guys experience? Like, give, give us a sense, Phil, of the emotional toll it takes when a player first experiences it. Maybe they've, they've won it before, maybe they haven't, maybe they're younger, older, especially maybe the older guys, I would imagine, the emotional toll when they finally get to experience the Cup for the first time as a, as a champion. It, it's, it's amazing. I, I guess it's on a twofold. There's the younger guys, yeah. and I remember talking to Jeremy Roenick years ago. He came into the Chicago Blackhawk organization in the late, uh, it was at 90, yeah, yeah. I think. They played the Penguins their first year, and... They lost to the Penguins. Jeremy Roenick never got back to the finals again. And I remember to asking him years later, and he said, we got to the final the first year. He goes, I thought, right. wow, this is no problem. I'm 18. I'm in the Stanley Cup final. He goes, I didn't realize we'd never get back again. And then there's a guy, Kimo Timonen, who uh, won it in Chicago last year. Baby. Yeah, he had played uh, his whole career from Finland, came over when he was young, played all, never got that chance. He played limited time in the final. They had him on the ice. Uh, his last game, he played the ice. And he told me on his day, they had the morning skate, and he was skating around. He said, I was all nervous. He goes, I'm in the game. And Captain Jonathan Taves came up to him, stopped by, and stood right in front of him. He said, he looked me right in the eye, and he said, tonight when we win, I'm giving it to you first. And, he, and Taves skated on it, and Kimo said to me, he goes, I went to skate, and he goes, I thought my legs were going to buckle. He goes, not only was I going to hold the cup first, he goes, but more importantly, Taves knew we were going to win that night, and he told me that. He goes, I got off the ice, I phoned my wife, and I said, we're going to win tonight. And she goes, well, why wouldn't you? No, but he said, we're going to win, we're going to win, and I'm on the ice, and I'm getting the cup first. And if you see that moment when he hands first it to Taminen, you see the expression on his face, and how do you put that in words? I, I don't know how you do that. No, you can't. Uh, I'm glad you mentioned Jeremy. JR was here about a year ago, and I, 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 I remember speaking with him about it and the disappointment that he had. This is one of the all-time great players, not only of our generation, but forever. And, and he, he said that when, when they first got there, when he was 18, 19 years old, that he thought it was no big deal, or it wasn't as upsetting because he knew he was going to come back multiple times. He, he would win multiple cups, and he never got the chance. Are there other players that you've been around, especially high-profile marquee players, that there's just a sense of tremendous disappointment because even after a great career, they couldn't, they couldn't do it? Yeah, and it's, it's amazing. Uh, what is there, 790 players each year that play in the NHL? I think there's 13,000 yeah. or something that have played over time. There's, there's only 2,200 names on here. More than half have won the cup more than once. So you put that percentage down, and then you look at how many people have played the game. I, I think it's less than .001 that actually start playing hockey and actually win the cup. So those odds are hugely against you. Yeah. But the guys that have had that opportunity to win it and have been in the right place for the right time, uh, Justin Williams comes yeah. to mind. He see, keeps winning wherever he yeah, goes. It's like, yeah. 
It's just whether it follows him around. Mike Richards, it seems to follow him around. And then there's guys. Ray Bork played 21 years, never got anything, gets traded to Colorado. I don't know if it's right time, right place, or Ray made that team extra, but he got that chance, and he won it. There's Brad Park, who played on the Rangers forever, and then Boston doesn't, doesn't get there. And it's, it's funny because when you see those guys today and you start talking about it, they still will not get their photo with a cup because they, didn't, they don't think they've earned the right to get the photo. They'll stand in the photo, but they will be way over here and there will be other people between them. But they don't think they've earned the right. Marcel Dion played 20 years. Daryl Sertler played the seven. I mean, there's a ton of those guys that never got that chance. They've submitted their legacy as great players, but they don't feel like... They, they deserve it because it's, it's above them until they actually win it. Right. Mission wasn't accomplished in their case. As an individual, great. But they're not there for the individual. They're there for the team to win that thing. We talk about gold medals, and, and it's such a big deal, the Olympics. And obviously the biggest uh, Olympics, I think, ever, at least for hockey, was the 1980 Miracle on Ice in Lake Placid. Do, how, how does this compare to a gold medal, I mean, there have been players that have won both, so have you got a sense of the differences? Yeah, I mean, it was funny because we were at Al Arbor's memorial last week. He, uh, he had passed away from the longtime Islander coach. The team had a little memorial last week. Kenny Morrow showed up. He won the 80 gold. Right after that, he gets the phone call from Bill Torrey and Al Arbor, we want you to come to the Islanders. They go right into the playoffs, right. they win the cup. And here's Ken Morrow, played college. He won multiple cups. He won four cups and a gold medal in a four-year span. Like, I mean, yeah. And you talk to Kenny, and he's so, he's a scout now, but he's so down to earth, and, you know, he'll say, ah, I was in the right place at the right time. The guys were great. But maybe, Kenny, you were part of that whole thing. Maybe you weren't in the right place at the right time. Maybe you were that missing piece of the puzzle. And guy, Sidney Crosby has won the cup a gold medal, a world championship, Jonathan Taves has, uh, Yarmer Jagger has. There's those guys that they, uh, they sense championships. They just know what it takes. Does the cup have a higher place for them, though? Do you get the sense than a gold medal? Because they're very different. A gold medal is so much about national pride, and especially if you're from you know, a Russia or a Canada when hockey, where hockey is so massive, but is there a difference in how much it means to these guys, one of the two? Uh, I mean, I, I think, obviously, you always have your loyalty to your countries, but their goal growing up was to play hockey professionally in the National Hockey League and win the Stanley Cup. I don't know if they actually think, hey, I'm going to go on and play for Team USA as well and win. They want to play for the Stanley Cup. They want to play in the NHL. They want to play in the best league in the world. The U.S. jersey or the Canada jersey or the Russian jersey, that's, that's bonus. That's, they don't think that style. Their, their goal is that. Yeah. And the gold is, is something special on top of it because it's such a short tournament. Yeah. This is 84 regular season games, playoffs. you got to win 16 more, it's, and it's a lifetime to win it. So you, you're now going, I've seen you all, all over the place. You're going to different cities. You're going to the Arctic Circle with the Cup. Yeah, what, next week. I mean, so the, some of these places, it's not like you're going to only to NHL games. You're not just going to playoff games. No, and you know what the funny thing is? We, we're not going to NHL games until it's actually time to be won. We won't go in the arena until that time happens. Uh, we do a media tour, obviously, right now, promoting the, the NHL playoffs, which obviously going on right now, and it's great every night on TV. You can watch hockey. It's, it's awesome. Uh, we are going to the Arctic Circle next week to do a, a tour for Inuits up in uh, northern Canada. They are watching NHL on their app as well, just like we are. They've got the satellite going. So it'll be pretty special for them. After that, we're coming back, probably continue the tour in that as we get into June come uh, Stanley Cup final time. How many days are you on the road a year, Phil? I'm about 180. I don't know. I'm sure Man. you ask my wife. Yeah, she can tell you exactly. <laughs> so when you're – do Pete, has anybody – like, is there a story that stands out in your 27 years, right, with the Cup, that I, you just – it's imprinted in your head, not from a player but from a fan, that you, a, a fan was so passionate 
and so out of control with the cup that you'll never forget it. I, I mean, I think every day there's a new chapter being told. To me, the most special time and the most honorable time for me is walking it out on the red carpet every year to pass it over to Commissioner Bettman, who gives it to the captain. That is very lucky. I'd, I'd trade my position any day to have Commissioner Bettman hand me the cup instead, and I can take it home. And I'm sure you would, or a lot of you would out there. But there's always these fans out there, and there's, this one's about a non-fan, actually. And we were, it was in... Uh, Lake Tahoe, Nevada in 1996, Patrick Waugh, the, the goaltender for the uh, Colorado Avalanche, he got invited to play in a pro-am golf tournament down in Lake Tahoe. So John Elway was there. I mean, there was a lot of players, basketball, football, yeah. baseball. Patrick came, did the ultimate team thing. He brought the Stanley Cup. That was part of his day. Not going home to go back. He brought it down to the pro-am golf tournament. So we went down. We're in Lake Tahoe, and we've got it out on display. And they're all, you know, everyone's getting autographs with all the players. Every hole, Patrick, he had his own cart. He drove, he finished the hole, drove back, and came and got photos with people. So there's all these fans waiting. And then he'd have to leave and tee off and come back a couple of minutes later. But this one lady came over to me and said, do you have a coffee cup? Oh. And I said, no, I, you might get one in the clubhouse. She goes, well, how can you have no coffee cups and you have a coffee urn right here? And so not everybody. No, so she wasn't a hockey fan or, or anything. And I said, this isn't a coffee urn, it's the Stanley Cup. Well, what is, what's it for? It looks like a coffee urn. <laughs> and so I started explaining to her, and she was an elderly lady, and she says, you know, every day I come down, I swim in the lake. She goes, it's 36 degrees year-round. It's cold, but it's good for your body, and I need a coffee after every time to warm me up. And she goes, and I could have sworn it was a cop. So she stood there. Get and out of here. Patrick came over, and I introduced her to her. She had no idea who Patrick She didn't know anything about hockey. But she stayed with me all day. And I'm sure she's a hockey fan, wherever she is now. I don't, I'm sure she's a Colorado Avalanche fan, because Patrick was really nice to her. But she, was, she wanted a coffee. So it's, that was a non-fan that you, you can't forget those stories. And hopefully we created another hockey fan that day. I, I'm sure at some point... Ice cream, coffee. There's been a lot of beverages in this in this cup. Is that of different different kinds? Well, I, I guess I'm going to switch it for a second, Jordan. You're the Stanley Cup champion. You win. You bring it home. What, is, I, what just, are you doing? I'll put seltzer in there. No, no. I <laughs> I think there's a I think there's a lot. You, you know, beer is a part of the hockey culture, but uh, there's plenty. I mean, it can hold a lot, right? There's, it can, and it's it's amazing. I mean, hockey and beer has always gone along, yeah. but in today's athletes. Beer is a small, I mean, they are in a training yeah. regime to make sure that from September till June, they're in peak form. Yeah. So beer is not the biggest thing. I mean, they're, they're, their bodies are hockey machines, I guess, in a way. And they're, but obviously we've had beer and we've had champagne. It, it depends what country you're in. If you're in Russia, you, you don't have beer or champagne. You have vodka in it. Uh, Germany's probably beer. <laughs> yeah, Germany would be beer. We've had ice cream in Slovakia a few years ago. Uh, Thomas Kopecki, who sure. played, uh, he played at the Red Wings, played with the Hawks. There's another guy that the cup keeps following him around. We were in his small town outside a trench in Slovakia, and his his mom makes this traditional Slovakian soup. And he said, "Can I eat out of the, the soup in here?" And I said, "Well, what is it?" He goes, "Well, I want you to try some." I said, "Well, I'm I'm not going to have it out of the." cup but give it to me in a bowl no have it out of the cup i said i i didn't win it i'm not not doing that so he him and his buddies had some out of the cup and he gave me out of the bowl and he told me what it was in slovakian and my slovakian is not very good i'm sorry but i'll translate it in english for you it was the inside of the cow stomach soup oh super yeah it was super it was awesome and i'm glad he told me after i had it so yeah we've had that and we've had pierogies brad richards from uh rangers yeah, when he, now, or, or no, when he won to Tampa, he had a lobster in it because he's from Prince Edward Island. His dad was a lobster fisherman, and that's how he grew up. That's how he became a hockey player because of what his dad did for a living. He took him to the rinks after lobster. So it depends where you are in the world and what culture it is, is part of it. And not just for the inside of the cup, for wherever it happens to be. Uh, Northern Finland or Finland itself, it's sauna parties are a huge part of the Finnish culture. 
So that's what you'll do. Yeah, I think you don't have to be a hockey fan or, or even a sports fan to appreciate the magnitude of it, and that's what's so special about it. Um, all right, so you want to open up some questions? I know we got a lot of hockey fans. Please. Hey, Phil. Uh, thanks How are for you? being here. Hey, thanks for having me. Uh, my question for you is, do you have a favorite hockey team, or do you have to remain neutral out of respect to all the teams? Well, I, uh, I love hanging out with the winners, which is always good. <laughs> And uh, unfortunately, I don't really get to meet the guys that don't win. But growing up, uh, I'm from just outside of Toronto. I was a Montreal Canadian fan growing up. And at that time, uh, we couldn't get the Montreal games on TV. We'd have to listen to them on the radio. But where I was, in, uh, where I lived outside of Toronto on a Sunday night, we could pick up Montreal games, Sabre games, Ranger games, Fort Wayne Comets from the IHL and Chicago Blackhawks. So my, my fan appreciation started to grow and grow. Then I worked for the Canadian Hockey League, so I got into that. And then I just became an ultimate hockey fan, hanging out at the Hockey Hall of Fame with the Cup. But I think right now, you see a great hockey game, no matter what it is. I mean, last night, there was four great ones on. And so to me, I'm uh, just a fan of hockey now. You wanted me to say the Rangers, didn't you? <laughs> I wanted to say the Habs. Oh, okay. Hey, Phil, good morning. Uh, the cup is totally blinged out. I'm in awe of it. In your opinion, who are a couple of hot prospects to keep an eye on in the, N in the NHL for a couple of years to come? Player-wise, uh, hot prospects and what, to win the cup? Or? Yeah, totally. I mean, I, I think as, as we've been talking about, the, to order to win the cup, you need a, a great team. And there's a lot of teams that are putting together great rosters right now. You look at the 16 teams that are in there, a few years ago, they've all gone through the building process and that. As you look at the Ovechkins and Crosbys and Taves, they are getting older in their career. They're not old, but they're in their late 20s. But then there's the young guys uh, in Edmonton and Connor McDavid's and, and uh, Jack Eichels and Buffalo. Those, those younger guys are the guys coming up. But more importantly, those teams are the teams that need to rebuild to get to that final 16 and then go from there. And I think what is neat about hockey, as we go into the playoffs, the superstars rise to the occasion, but so do the, the rest of the team, because they all pick up off that. So I, I think we'll be surprised on who some of them might be. Hi, Phil. Morning. Have you ever thought, after looking at the cup, if you were given the opportunity to add something to it, like a quote or something, would you take that opportunity? Did you say a quote or something? Yeah, a quote or a something. You Are you saying, could, should I engrave something on it? Is that what you're asking? <laughs> you know what? I, uh, being a hockey fan from day one, I know you've, you've got to win it to earn that right. Uh, I think I'm very fortunate to hang out with it in that. Would I trade my job to have my name on it in a second? For sure I would. Uh, I would never do anything to, to uh, disrespect the Stanley Cup or anything like that. I mean, look at it here. It's... It's three feet high, it's 35 pounds of silver, it's priceless. And each one of these names on here can tell a story much better than I can because they're first, first person uh, victories in that. So uh, no, I'd, I would never do that, but I would love one day to have that opportunity to win it and my name would be on there hopefully. Uh, hi Phil, it's uh, really great to meet you today. Uh, I have two questions, first of all, uh, several years back, I did go to the Hockey Hall of Fame in Toronto, and I did meet with some of the employees working there, and I'd just like to clarify. Um, I was told that there were actually three Stanley Cups, one that stayed at the museum, one that toured with the winning team, and one that was for promotional reasons. They kind of traveled around the world. That's my first one, if you would clarify that, how many there are, where they go. And number two, when the hockey players have an opportunity to have the cup for themselves for a day, are you always with them every moment with the cup, or do you drop it off and come back at a certain time to pick it up? Well, first of all, I'm glad you went to the Hockey Hall of Fame. Hopefully a lot of people have here had that chance. If not, please come by. Uh, so your, to your question, this is the original Stanley Cup right here. This is the one the guys win. Whenever you see it outside of the hall, that's the real one. When you went into the Great Hall, where all the NHL trophies are at the Hockey Hall of Fame, depending on what time of year it was, it might have been a replica or it could have been this one. As for the third one, the original bowl that Lord Stanley donated is in the vault. If you remember going in the vault, 
that would count as a, we don't use that one anymore. It hasn't been used since the 60s because it was built in 1859, I think was the, when the bull was made. It is beginning to frail and it, it can get damaged very easily. So the bull was replaced in the late 60s and the rest of the cup is all original. But for that long, this has been the original cup in that. Uh, so that answers that part of the question. What was your second part again there? With, with oh, the players. Oh, with the players, yes. Uh, someone is always with the cup. We never leave it by, our, by itself. They, uh, we kind of, uh, as part of a team, the cup goes with myself, goes or one of the other cup keepers in that, wherever it might be. So we, we become kind of the family for the day. And it, it's, it's very peculiar at first, very special. Uh, we show up and meet the player or phone the player and say, hey, we're just around the corner. Do you want to meet us or do you want us to come to your house? And often they say, no, just come to our house. So we pull in and he'll be outside and he'll meet us there. And we'll go in and he'll introduce us to everybody after probably 20 minutes. They have no idea who we are because all they've, they didn't even listen to him. All they've looked at is the cup and they go, is that the guy? Is that the cup guy? Like, we don't have a name in the summer. It's just the cup. That's the cup guy over there. Make sure, make sure you feed him or whatever. And a, just a funny story on that. Jonathan Quick, when he won with L.A. the first time, he's uh, from Connecticut. So we showed up at his house in the morning. It was about, he said to be there around 9. So we phoned him about 5 to 9. And uh, Walt Newbrand, one of the other guys and myself were there, and we phoned him up. And it rang and rang, and he answers the phone. Hello? And Walt says, hey, Jonathan, it's Phil and Walt. We're right around the corner. Oh, all right, come on over. So... We come pull out to his house, and he walks out, and he's in, I think he's in his wife's nightgown. Or I don't even know what he's in. He's got a New York Giants hat on and slippers. And he goes, I didn't think nine actually meant nine. I just thought you'd just kind of show up whenever. Uh, my wife's gone out shopping, <laughs> and, and I'm just kind of laying here playing uh, Sega Vision. So come on in. <laughs> so... So if they didn't have anything planned for later in the day, I guess when we originally talked, he just said, yeah, nine's fine. But he didn't. So we sat there, me and him and Walt, and had, uh, oh. yeah, I think we had, uh, no, we didn't have a car. I think we had Cheerios or something. I'm not sure what we had. <laughs> Great question, anyway. Oh, yeah, one more. Hello, Phil. So morning. You just, good morning. So you just mentioned that the top of the cup was changed in the 60s. Were there any other parts of the cup that have changed in the 123 years that has been made? And also, if you were to sell the cup, how much would it be worth? <laughs> I'm going to answer your second part first. Uh, the cup is priceless. You can ask any hockey player that's ever played for, for any hockey fan. Obviously, we have to have it insured in that. But the, the great thing about it is because it's silver, it varies in price all the time because silver is going up and down in that. So when it's, we have a blanket insurance through the Hockey Hall of Fame, the NHL has an insurance on it as well. But it is priceless. And so you're never going to find it on eBay or Kijiji or any of those things. Uh, to, to your first part of the question, I, I think what is great about it, and when if I hopefully you can get up to come and see this after, but it started like this in 1893. And as we grew over time, by 1907, there was no room for the players' names or team names to go on it. So we added a layer to here. And then it grew that far. Then it grew further and further. So to actually to answer your original question, it has grown over the years. And we now have two years left on it right now before it evolves again. And what is going to happen, we're going to take this ring right here off. That's going to go into the vault in the Hockey Hall of Fame. We'll add... We'll slide these up and add a new ring to the bottom. And every 13 years, the Stanley Cup changes. It evolves, but it remains the same. So it has grown over the years. It has evolved, but it has that hourglass look to it that, that everybody has come to appreciate and, and respect and love over the years. Isn't that the beauty of the game, evolving and staying the same? It, it has. The game has evolved yeah. so much, but it, but it stayed the same. And I know we talked earlier about the Larry O'Brien trophy in that. Nothing against the other sports. They all have great trophies in that. They make a new one every year. The Stanley Cup, you're basically you're, you're winning it for the summer. Your name goes on it forever. The team has it for the summer. But come opening night, it comes back to the Hockey Hall of Fame. That team's mission is to win it again. They don't have this sitting in their foyer or in their coach's office. They get a small version. Every player on the team gets a small version. They get their names on it. They get their Stanley Cup ring. 
and it comes back, and that process starts again. In the Super Bowl, you get one. It stays at the field. Or Trophies coaches. in the foyer on, on every... Exactly. Yeah, the Pittsburgh Steelers have them all over the place in their office. But in this, this is it. Phil, we want to thank you so much. I really appreciate you coming. Thanks, thanks everybody, for coming as well. <laughs>